Pam, what are some issues and conflict areas that you are seeing couples get into during this time of quarantine and social distancing? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, a couple of things that I've just talked to people about, I mean, finances definitely because so many people are affected by this financially, uh, or there's an uncertainty financially, maybe they haven't been affected completely yet, but then certainly what's it going to be all those kind of things. So I think that is a, a big issue. I think I've had a, some people, the social distancing has been an issue because one is better than the other. And so it scares the other person or the other person's not really, um, honoring that or respecting that or um, those kind of things. So I've seen that happen. And I think the other thing I would say, just uh, people trying to get balance and not not how, knowing how to do that uh, because they're in a situation they haven't been in before. And so how much time we spend together, how much time do we spend apart? How do, what do we do when we get on each other's nerves to keep from just fighting? And so I think some new things are coming up just because of new situations that people are in that probably they haven't been in or certainly not for a long period of time before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, it was, it's been so interesting. So Dylan is still able to go into work because he's a pastor of a, a small church. And so there's no one at church anyways. And the governor in our state has said, you know, churches are still able to meet um, and stream services and film things for their congregation with a uh, small staff and social distancing. So they're still doing that. But most days he's up there just completely by himself. So yeah. we're not even together as much as some couples are because some couples are literally sure. just quarantined to their home. And even that first week, even with with him going still to church, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five, it was just so interesting because we weren't, so we weren't used to spending every single evening together with no one else. Right. And so right. we just like getting on each other's nerves in that first week. But I mean, after just seven days, I was looking at him. I was like, oh my word, we're driving each other crazy. <laughs> and so just getting on each other's nerves because so right. much time spent together. I think that's a really good point. And like you guys, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. You guys have people from your church over to dinner you do a all lot time, of things normally. all the time and so that kind of adds for you guys added some balance and now it's you guys and so it's figuring out i think for all of us yeah how do we grow that i mean i'm home usually i'm home a lot anyway because i do all of us in marriage from home i've been to go to the counseling center a couple of full days a week and now i'm home on those days doing counseling virtually and so it wasn't a huge adjustment, but it was a little more. It's kind of funny. I don't think Nancy realized some of the things that she did on Wednesday, Thursday when I was gone that, you know, but now that I'm home, it was just a little different, you know, Yeah, definitely. I can get, I can get in her way. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But I've seen a, a, an array of issues with all of us. So I've definitely heard like what you were saying about, you know, some of us are following the rules more than others when it comes to social distancing or just like, it's interesting. Everyone's exceptions are so different with this uh, because there are, you know, some with, within all of that. But I, so I've seen a lot of couples fighting about that of like, are we literally just going to quarantine or are you still going to go see your widowed mother-in-law? Yes, no, maybe so all of that. And so couples are arguing about that or like, oh, even like the small things of like, you know, we're all allowed to go grocery shopping, but some couples wanting just one spouse to go always. So it's like consistent. This is just the person who goes out the one time a week to go grocery shopping. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the other spouse is like, it doesn't matter who goes, we'll go whenever. And, and so, yeah, like we're respond, our response to this is so different. And so I, I've seen like, you know, some, some tensions rub there as well, which is really stressful. I, absolutely it is. And, you know, I, um, you know, I had somebody that, uh, uh, what was it they did They anyway, they had, they met with some, oh, someone to, uh, cut their hair yeah. and, uh, away. And then, you know, told their spouse about it and the spouse goes, how do we know? Is she doing that? How many places is she going? How many, yeah. you know, how many businesses she's going to, to cut hair and things like that. And so, you know, that really was alarming. And I think especially where I see it is someone that is really following the guidelines just to the letter down. And so there's not much tolerance for someone that bends the rules a little bit. And I, and I get that. I mean, we all, you know, we, we've been told over and over the, the more that we do social distance, the more that we follow the guidelines, the better chance is that we're not going to get it and it's going to uh, speed the recovery time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's been a, a tension that I've seen in, in lots of couples. And then I think too, a lot of couples are just stressed. And so they're snapping at each other. So we're extra stressed. We're grieving. 
we're anxious. And so we're just snapping at each other and having attitudes. And then I see a lot of couples also running into conflict when it, hand, when it comes to handling their children. So life with kids looks really different these days. And so how to parent, I've seen a lot of couples just running into those issues. And, you know, I'm, I'm, we're in that category too. We've, we've had our sense of struggles as well. Yeah. And so it's just interesting. And we're going to do a whole nother episode on parenting when it comes to being quarantined. But I do right. want to throw that out there as, yeah, we're, we're, we're dealing with that too. It, it is a struggle. It is. And depending on how many kids you have, um, and not that one couldn't be a problem, but if you've got, you know, one family I have that has seven, that's a bigger problem, you know, than yeah. it is for, you know, just because of, uh, a lot to do, especially if you're having to do homeschooling and you're getting, uh, homework sent to you from the school and it's like, wow, this is really a lot. Yeah. And just how to handle all these changes. Yeah. I'm just like, do we keep the same discipline model? Do we not? And yeah. so it's just, it's just a lot. And then one other issue that I'm seeing couples run into that I'm also running to, into is just, we're not giving each other enough grace for the mm. situation. And so something that I've really had to ask God to help me to do is to to give Dylan lots and lots of grace. So I find myself wanting to tell Dylan that, oh, you hurt my feelings or, hey, you got a little bit of attitude with me right just then or um, to get on him about little things that in normal life, in normal marriage, I would normally share with him. But I have to remind myself that he's dealing with so much right now. We all are, but he, I mean, he's a pastor. He's trying to figure right. out how to do everything online. He's trying to care for his whole congregation virtually. Like he has a lot of stress and especially being a small church church that is just now getting established you know right. we planted three years ago so there's a huge financial stress and like are we gonna make it <laughs> like it he's dealing with so much and so i have tried to ask myself like what can i let go of you know and yeah. what does that look like just to extend grace i don't have to address every little thing right now i can choose to let a lot go because i've got to recognize that you know i just i've just noticed in my own marriage that under this extreme stress we're kind of regressing you know, mm. like we're, we're dealing with things that we have overcame through God and hard work sure. and our marriage that we've overcame years ago and somehow they're surfacing. And I, I just kind of feel like those things aren't going to persist once this is gone, if that makes sense. No, it, it does. And I think it is interesting how we think we go through things. And sometimes we go back to in, in stressful situations, go back to some old patterns that, that weren't healthy then. And they're certainly not healthy now, but I love what you said about, I think empathy is what I got out of a lot, what you said. And I think for all of us to keep that in mind, to put yourself in your spouse's shoes, what, how does this look like? How does this whole thing look like? through their perspective. What are they dealing with different than what I'm dealing with? How do I support them in that? How do I come alongside them in that? And, and then you begin to do some positive things during this time um, and probably minimize the criticism. But just like you, when you're able to sit there and think about what Dylan is going through right now and what he is dealing with, it, it is easier to give someone grace when you take time to do that because yeah. we're going to irritate each other and probably more just because of the situation. And it's a stressful time for everybody in in for different situ different reasons yeah definitely so is that normal dr him to kind of regress and like bring back old <laughs> behaviors and extremes isn't that amazing how how we do that and i think we all are aware of that that and i don't know probably because most of those behaviors are ones that we did for quite a while it wasn't like we just did it one day and then we worked through it and got over it so they really were a pattern it was a pattern of coping or dealing with things or maybe how we dealt with frustration or anger or things like that and it's so funny how it i don't know it's funny but it seems it's interesting that we can go back to that and we and then all of a sudden you catch yourself and thought i dealt with that we dealt with that and here i am doing it again and so i think of what, what you said the awareness uh of saying and then i think of prayer just say god i you have helped me work through this before don't let me get back into that you know just yeah. just so you're conscious of it i think that's the thing the hard thing is when we slip back into those things and we don't become aware of them and we get back into those patterns that that are going to feel pretty comfortable because we did them for a long time yeah, definitely, definitely. And just to give some examples to keep it real here, because you know, we love to keep it real on yeah. the Awesome Marriage Podcast and to give some examples so, so that other couples can maybe relate. I feel like both Dylan and I have, are a lot more sarcastic. You know, we're regressing in that sense. I feel like for a long time, we kind of overcame and we chose to use kind words with each other and chose not to use sarcasm. And now all of a sudden, we're both being kind of snarky and sarcastic. And then we're also, I feel like, micromanaging how the other person parents a little bit. And again, you know, we worked really hard to overcome that through prayer and hard work and talking and counseling. And now I find ourselves just regressing a little bit. Yeah, I think that happens. It, it, it's so interesting how that can happen. And I think the good thing is you're aware of it right now. Yeah. 
definitely. But do you think that these things will persist? Like, do you think we do need to bring them all up with each other or can we let this go and give each other a break and extend grace and then just deal with it later? I, you know, I think you can, um, I think you can maybe talk. I, I'm not sure. I think you can talk about it. What I would say, Hey, I'm feeling this. I found myself progressing a little bit. I don't want to do that. Uh, or something like that. Maybe an informational thing. I don't think that you want to delve into because I do think when you get back to normal um, whenever that is that we can you know maybe if, if they persist then really work on them but I think if you feel like you're you're getting into more of those negative things and it's really hurting your marriage then I would say yeah those are red flags that you need something about so I think it's kind of a balance between grace which which we need to give each other right now and then but is there something here that is significant enough that we we yeah we can give grace but we probably need to talk about it too yeah, I think that makes that makes sense. I think I think it's going to be different for every couple and every every right. behavior. And so just prayer and asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. So I have felt like in my prayer, the Holy Spirit has told me like, let's just give it a little break. Like, you know, you don't have to bring that up. But that's just the Holy Spirit guiding me in my specific situation. But isn't it so great that the Holy Spirit is within all of us as Christ followers and that he will guide you as well? Absolutely. And that, which is so great. And, you know, I don't know how he does it, but it's sure good. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So Dr. Ham, what are some things that every couple needs to be doing right now for their marriage during this time of quarantine and social distancing? Well, I think, um, I think look at it. I, we've talked about this some before we've talked about it on some of the daily things I'm doing is use this as an opportunity to grow your marriage. I mean, if you really think about this, I mean, these are some challenges you may not have, ever again in your life. And so what if you learn to really grow your marriage through this and then probably anything else that comes up in the future is going to be kind of like a, you know, pretty easy deal, piece of cake for you. Uh, so I think working on good communication, making sure that you're having time to do that, working on listening well to each other. I, I think this is a really good time to be a student of your spouse. Uh, depending on your spouse, you know, I've got some spouses that, that are sharing their fears and anxieties and other people keep that in. Well, this is a good time to maybe uh, allow your spouse to have that time or try to help them say, Hey, how are you really feeling about this? Is there anything you're afraid of or this kind of stuff? And then really listen to your spouse there. I think it's a great time to, I think praying together is great. However, you're comfortable with that. If it's just talking about things you want to pray about, if it's actually praying together, uh, both of you praying out loud or silently, whatever that is, but praying together or maybe saying each day, what do we want to pray about today and make and both of you doing that and watching God show up. And then I think it gives you some time to do uh, to do some Bible plans. We've talked about that, but, you know, there's so many great version plans. We've got 40 on there from Awesome Marriage. And you could pick something like that. Maybe if, it, if it's anxiety you guys are dealing with, then you do one on anxiety. If you're feeling like you're being angry with each other more, do one on anger. But there's some things. And that way, not only are you dealing with an issue, you're putting God's word around it and, and seeing how the healing can really come there and that you're growing through this. So all of that is to say that I, that I think it is an opportunity to grow your marriage. Um, take advantage of the opportunity. Don't miss that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think this is a great time to just build love and connection and trust in your marriage by supporting yep. each other through a hard thing, right? This is a hard thing, no matter who you are or where you are or what you're going, like this is just hard. And yep. so supporting each other through hard things builds love and connection and trust. And so take advantage of that opportunity. Don't just get in your own head and worry about what you're going through. Also support your spouse through this so that you can build that trust and connection. And then I love that you mentioned prayer. We have a free resource that we'll link in our show notes. Uh, it's just coronavirus house prayer cards and it's guided prayers that are specific to the situation that we're, we're all facing. It's just a 100% free resource. And so snag that if you're like, I don't even know what to pray for, um, which I feel like is where a lot of us are at right now because we can't even think straight. So that's a great resource to grab. And then Absolutely. I think yeah, that is a great resource. I just would reiterate that. It's such a great resource that our team came up with. It's super. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I'd say check in with each other, like make sure that on a regular basis, every couple of days, you're just checking in with yourselves mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, like kind of assessing their health, asking them good questions, and then really listening to them. Um, and, and when they ask you and when you're sharing with them about your mental and emotional and spiritual health, I would just encourage you to be really honest. It's okay to not be okay. I have talked to a lot of people um, who are struggling and they feel like, 
you know, that they, they don't have it so bad, you know, and so that they shouldn't be struggling, but I'm, we're all grieving. We're grieving different things and you can grieve small right. things and large things. Someone might have lost their job or actually be sick with COVID and that's really hard and they're going to be grieving, but you can also grieve your missed vacation and you know, that your flight got canceled and that you're bored or you're stir crazy. Like yeah. you can grieve anything. It's okay to not be okay. Be honest about how you're really feeling. No, I think that's really good. I, it reminds me yesterday I was talking to one of my clients and, and she was making a really good point. She was taking the coronavirus and comparing it to hurricanes. And she said, there's level one, two, three, four, five. And so she said, I've got some friends that this is, this is a level five for them. For me, it's a level two. And so I think that is that we're, we're all in a hurricane, but it's a different level. And so some things might, you know, I haven't lost a job. So I'm not like someone that has lost a job and is worrying about the finances there. Uh, I'm not someone that's had someone uh, that's been in the hospital from this or things like that. Those people, you know, that's a five for them. And so I think really realizing that they're all different levels. We're all affected by it, but some levels are higher than others for different people. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then I think we've just got to communicate well during this time yeah. with our spouse. And so really ask and listen and share each other's, like share your heart about COVID-19. So share your fears, honestly, with your spouse. Talk about what you wish would happen. Talk about, you know, what you're confused about or what you're annoyed sure. about or mad about with all of this. And, 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 and just, yeah, be okay sharing open. Like we've got to have a safe place. Our spouse has got to be that safe place for us where we can just say all the things, so the things that maybe we wouldn't share with someone else. And so just being really honest about that. And then I think there is this huge financial piece of this. I think no matter what your financial situation is in a time like this, where there's uncertainty or you are going through a traumatic experience with your finances, like you have to make these wise financial choices together. So really hear each right. other out when it comes to financial decisions and make decisions together through this hard, hard time. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It, and I think it is. And it get, again, it's an opportunity to maybe, maybe you've talked about getting more on the same page with your finances. Well, here's a great chance for you to do that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And reach out to, you know, other people at church or other people that you know are wise with their finances. If you just don't know what to do, then that's a great option as well. And I know we had a really great podcast that we'll link to um, with uh, Dan and Kay talking all about COVID in our finances, which was really helpful. If you missed that, make sure you go back and listen to that one. Some great tips financially. Yes. Yeah. And then I think two other things for couples to do is just to spend time together talking about things other than COVID. And so really building some fun into your marriage right now and, and taking a pause from talking about COVID-19 sometimes. I know we have our date designs right now. All three of them are, are free because we know you're homebound and you can't go out on real dates. Yep. And so we have provided those, which we'll link in the show notes as well. But do those and do other creative things at home with your spouse that are fun and, and, and take some relief and some reprieve from always talking about coronavirus so that just for your like mental sanity, Absolutely. I think it's really yes. important. And then I know a lot of couples, this doesn't work for us, but, uh, I know a lot of couples, uh, doing projects around the home is really helpful for them and something yeah. that they can do that's fun and that you feel like you're being productive. Like some people just got to feel productive. And so, do, you know, picking a house project to do or a craft project or a baking project or something new. Dylan and I always get in fights when we do house projects, so this doesn't work for us, but <laughs> I'm sure it works for some of you guys. <laughs> that's what I thought I'd share. Yeah, I, I agree. I, that's what I was, I was getting ready to say. I said, if you know that this is a danger point for you and that Don't the times you've tried to paint a room together before didn't work. And uh, Nancy have always done that pretty good. We're doing some outside stuff right now and getting ready to plant some stuff this weekend. We painted uh, a room one time together, uh, which is really fun. It was when our daughter was still at home. She was at summer camp. And so we painted while she was gone to come home. And we painted each other too one day. So, Oh, that's you know, interesting. It was well, there pretty, you go. It was pretty <laughs> It's pretty fun. Those so, some creative ideas but, for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I won't go too much detail on that, but anyway, it was nope. fun. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love it. Well, there's a creative idea, unique thing for you guys to do. Try Paint it. Don't, don't tell us we don't give you unique ideas over yeah, here. Okay? Yeah, we're good finger. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, we're done. <laughs> we're done with that. <laughs> so, Dr. Graham, what are some things you recommend us do to protect our mental health during this time? Uh, don't watch too much 
on the TV about the crisis. I would limit it if you want to just get an update. I would say an update every day, but don't sit there in front of that all the time. And I think, you know, a lot of people are streaming stuff and all that kind of stuff, Netflix, whatever it is. Just, I would say, don't watch depressing shows. Try to find the shows that are lighter uh, or that not too heavy. Uh, maybe some comedies, you know, we're, we're kind of going back and looking at some of the older comedies just, just because they're a lot of innocence in them and they're funny and they're just creative and stuff like that. Uh, I think taking time to reading, I think it'd be a great time to read or to listen to audiobooks. Uh, if pick some things that maybe pick fiction, you just want to read a story or maybe you want to say, Hey, I would, I've really been wanting to enrich my life in this area. And so I'm going to read a book that would help me do that. Same thing with podcasts. You know, there's so many good podcast out there there are the good podcasts besides ours there really are um but <laughs> ours is the best we know that yeah <laughs> so um, so look at things that might enrich you um and then i think the other thing that nancy and i do well and and it is so good for us and that is to laugh together and whether it's just being silly together or 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 watching uh videos that are funny together or funny comedians i can't think of guys and we've been watching some this guy the comedian was probably 10 or 15 years ago, the stuff that's on uh, YouTube and stuff with him, but he, he, he is, uh, he's not off color at all. And he's hilarious, which I, I always believe you don't have to say certain words to be funny. And this mm -hmm. guy doesn't, and he doesn't go there. He just talks about real life situations. So we've had a ball, listen to some things. Like so find some things that you can look at, laugh together, those kind of things. And there's nothing better than just laughing together. Yeah, that's real good. I love that. I think uh, another thing that we can all do to protect our mental health, and that has really been helpful for me, is to stay active. And so exercising, there's a lot of indoor workouts that you can do just from the confines of your home. And yes. so many of these wonderful companies, workout companies and training and personal trainers are giving away bundles of stuff for free because they know we're quarantined and that the gyms are closed. And so like for the ladies tone it up app is what I'm using, which has been really helpful. And I know there's a lot of like kinesthetic stuff on YouTube that's free for guys. And so there's all kinds of options, but I think staying active is good for our mental health. Absolutely. There are so many I found out because I was going crazy. I was running some, but then the weather's been cold here in the mornings and I don't like to run what's cold anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. And, and so I found uh, an app that I love and it's got all kinds of different. So I've been doing all the cardio, cardio challenge this week and I'll do some upper body stuff with it. It's amazing. The exercise you can do without a gym. I mean, yeah. you really can, and you can accomplish a lot. Nancy's doing, I can't remember what she's doing. Pilates or one of them on, on, on TV. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but anyway, she's doing that every day. And so there's some great resources. Yeah. What, what she's doing is stuff that's been put out by this company for free just for this time. And yeah. so there's a lot of good research. So just kind of look through your app store or looking and, you know, see what's available and pick something. And, you know, the things that help with depression are eating right, sleeping right and exercise. And so try to be as healthy with that as you can, you know, and I think maybe it's easy to slip into some bad eating habits during this, try to eat healthy as you can. And, and, and then, and I, I know some people sleep is hard when they're stressed or they worry about things. Um, but do everything you can to get some, some decent sleep during this time too. And, you know, if you need to ask your doctor to give you something, they'll help you for a short time. I would do that because it, the healthier you stay, it's going to help you fight off any depression or those kind of feelings that can come. Yeah, that's good. I love that. That's really good advice. I think uh, another thing that we can do and that I have found that's really helpful is just deciding what I'm going to say yes to and what I'm going to say mm -hmm. no to as far as normal life responsibilities because – you know, the world is different right now. And so it's okay for us to adapt with that. And I think a lot of us struggle, especially some of us more type A personalities struggle with those adaptions. They, we struggle with, um, yet yeah, not do having our regular re regiment or regulations and things like that. And so it, because this is going to look different for everyone, it's okay to adapt with that. And so I've just kind of made a list of things that I'm going to like stop doing and start and keep doing. And like that might shift from week to week. So for right. instance, for me, I still like to get up and I, what I call put on hard pants jeans. Like I still get dressed <laughs> every day. That's hard what I call pants. them hard, hard pants. <laughs> and so, uh, for some people that might be a list that's on their no, like, Oh, I'm not going to get dressed for the day anymore because I'm not going anywhere. But for me, it's good for my mental health to get dressed. But then there's a lot of things that I've said no to. Like I used to limit my kids screen time. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. I used to not give my kids fruit snacks at 6am. I give my kid fruit snacks at 6am <laughs> now. Like, it's just like one of those things that I've shifted from what used to be on my no list to now I'm shifting it to my yes list. And it's just been so interesting to me. So I shared just on my personal Instagram, 
just my list of things that I'm saying no to during the quarantine and things that I'm saying yes to. And I was so surprised how many of my friends reached out and said that it was so encouraging to hear that and that they need to have more grace with themselves and that they need to make these lists for themselves. And so I thought I would just share that because it's been really helpful for me. And it's kind of shifted week to week. So I find so much more is getting shifted from what used to be a no to me is now a yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be a completely different person when this is over. So <laughs> no, and your kids are loving it. Snacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I think that's so good because I think I, I too, I, I like structure. I like schedule. I like things like that. And I think the same thing, being some flex, flexible things. I do. I'm like you. I still like to get up early. I tried sleeping in some for a few days. I just didn't like it. I just didn't feel good. I still like to get up early. So like this morning, I get up at 5.30 and I do exercise time. I do quiet time. Uh, I spend some time with one of my clients a little bit. And then we come and do this. So so I like to get up and put my hard pants on too and hard shirts and whatever else you call it. Love it. Love <laughs> yeah, it. all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I know some people that say, hey, this is a chance I can really, I can sleep in a little bit later and then I can still get done what I want to get done. It's not a right or wrong. It's just what works for you. And I love the idea of just giving yourself some flexibility. You know, if you find yourself just locked in, I've got to do this every day at this time or whatever, ask yourself, do I really? I mean, yeah. what, what would happen if I really tried not doing that for a week? See what happens. And I think you're going to find there's so many things, you know, things that, that we thought we just need to do that we're not doing. And it's like, we're kind of enjoying not doing some things. Yeah, definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. just make, make those shifts and be okay with adapting them and, and communicate with your spouse about that. Like make, make these decisions together. Like Dylan wasn't jazzed about the fruit snacks thing, but then I convinced him. And so we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I agree. I think sometimes, um, and that's not a battle to fight right now. Yeah. You know, and you that, know. that was my thing is just like, we're cooped up. My, my kids miss their friends. If you want to have fruit snacks at 6am, like, I just don't care. I'm not, yeah, I, it's not right. a battle I'm going to fight in this. I'm going to fight other battles, but that's not a battle I'm going to fight right now. Ex exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's good. And then I think one other thing that's really good for our mental health is just, you know, we all are experiencing grief, like you mentioned earlier, Dr. Kim. And I think it's good to name it and recognize that and talk about it with our spouse. Like, let's, let's not pretend that we're not in the hurricane, like you were mentioning. Like, let's acknowledge that even though some people have it worse than us, that we are still in this, this crazy hurricane and we are experiencing grief and naming it, I think is helpful. I, I think so too. And, you know, Sometimes I think for people just understanding what grief really is, I think obviously we associate it when, when someone dies, that, that certainly there's grief there. But grief, I think, is anytime life goes different than you thought it would. So like when people get a divorce or something like that, COVID-19 fits in this. Nobody two months ago, is that right? Or two and a half months ago, thought we didn't even dream that we'd be doing what we're doing right now, that the whole world would shut down. And so uh, the grief that comes with that and the different ways, and it may be, you may grieve one thing one week and something the other week. And, and maybe you're, you know, your, your senior in high school is grieving, not getting to go through a graduation ceremony. And so you grieve with them on that. So there's a lot of grief issues. So I agree. Things you're sad about naming them is really good. Praying about that, talking about it to your spouse, and, and what I would say to the spouse that's getting talked to, just listen, don't try to fix it. Just say, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Let's pray about it or something like that. Don't try to fix it because there's some, so much value in just letting your spouse just express some of those things. That is part of working through grief. Yeah, definitely. That's good. That's good. So Dr. Kim, what are some things that we need to watch out for during a time like this? Like what are some unhealthy or unhelpful behaviors that, that we should avoid as couples? I think not choosing battles well, I think you kind of alluded to what you're doing, the grace you're showing, uh, Dylan, because I think it's easy right now to fight over everything. You know, you're together all the time. And so I think that I think just be careful with the little bickering that can eventually escalate in something else. And, you know, what good does it do? I mean, it, it just um, it's not healthy. It's not good for your marriage. Uh, nagging each other. You know, we usually put that on the woman. I think guys can be just as bad about it. Well, why aren't you fixing good dinner? Why aren't you fixing us a healthy dinner? Or why? And you could, you could say, well, why don't you cook the healthy dinner? You're home too. But I mean, you know, but, but I think those kind of things, I think withdrawing emotionally, we kind of hit on that just a minute ago, uh, is really unhealthy. I mean, you need to be talking about your emotions and feelings and what's going on. And maybe, maybe as a couple, you just set aside time every day that that you do that how, how are you feeling today what are you what are you thinking what what are you feeling anything you're afraid of uh and if your kids are old enough to be a part of that process too i mean if you got teenagers maybe you do that as a family if you have your little kids you can still do it but you want to 
you, you can kind of restructure it. You probably need it for the husband and wife alone. And then if you do with the kids to keep it on their level at this point, you know, and see what they're concerned about. I heard a guy talking yesterday and, and he was just talking about, um, the school teacher of his six year old got, um, did a zoom call with all the class members. And he said, it was so interesting watching because the teacher said to, to his son, well, what have you been doing? He said, I've been in school from home. And, and another kid goes, me too. Are you doing school from home? It's like they didn't figure, they just didn't know that everybody was doing it. So it was like this, me too, me too, with the whole class. And so we don't even think that way that kids can think. So giving them a chance to kind of see, you know, they're missing the friends and they're not, they're wondering what their friends are doing. And so giving them a chance to process that, I think is really good. And then the other thing I think you really got to be careful about is blaming. Don't blame, you know, it's not your husband's fault, not your wife's fault that any of this happened. And, and so then don't take that over to bickering and blaming about things with, within your marriage. Try to, again, the more you see yourself, I'm going to preach this through the whole COVID-19 as a team and grow in your marriage. Those two things, if you do that and putting God first in your marriage, you're going to come out of this at the other end and you're going to say, wow, that was horrible. But look where our marriage is now. Yeah. And look where our relationship with God is together. And that's what I want for Nancy and I. And, and that's what I want for everybody that's part of us in marriage. Yeah, definitely. I love that. I, I think we all just need to like get that rooted in our hearts because whenever we're going through a hard thing, it's always an opportunity to either draw you away from each other and you turn against each other yep. or to draw you closer together. And so in yep. that team mindset is what's going to be the thing that draws us closer together and make sure that our marriage is intact after this is over. Absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. Good, Dr. Kim. So what advice do you have for uh, those of us who, when our spouse is just really driving us crazy because we need space from them and we can't get it from them? What creative advice do you have for us? I know. I, I think like for we, where I live, I, we can take a walk. And I see, it's funny, I, after I saw that question, I thought, I've seen some couples, the, the, the spouse walking by themselves, and maybe that's what they're doing. They're not walking together. Just gonna, I think, I think try to create space. Now I, I think of our, our good friend Nils that's in New York city and they're not going outside this apartment. They're in a small apartment with, with, uh, his wife and two kids. And, and when Nils and I were talking a few weeks ago, his wife just happened to walk through while we're talking and she said, I'm going to the bathroom. And she said, I'm not going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to close the door so I can have some time alone. <laughs> and so, you know, find it. Maybe you have to go to the bathroom, whatever it is. But I think sometimes we need space. And I think, and I think to talk about your need for space to each other, talk about that together. And, and so your spouse doesn't take it negatively or in a, in a, in a bad way to say, Hey, I just realized that I, I need some space every day. And so I, can I go in the, it's okay with you if I just go in the bedroom for an hour and I'm just going to relax or read or do something like that. And then, and I'll honor that for you too, something like that. Um, but, but I think just sharing with that and creating some space wherever you are, however you can do that, it's going to be healthier for your marriage. And, and I think for maybe one spouse doesn't need that space as much as the other, just a lot of grace in that. You may be married to someone that really needs that space or really needs alone time. And they were able to get it pretty easily before and now they're not able to get that. And so again, it's working together on that. Yeah. And just recognizing that we're so different. And I think maybe yes. even wording it as you were talking, I was just envisioning Dylan telling me that he needed space for me. And that kind of makes me want to cry. And so maybe we even word it different than that. Like maybe we say, make it more about us and not about them. Right. So don't say, I need space from you. Say, I, want, I really need some alone time. I need yeah, some or quiet alone. time. Yeah. Or quiet. Cause then it makes it about me instead of like, you're, I need to get you're <laughs> driving me crazy, buddy. I even am. though that may be what it is, it just like sounds <laughs> so much gentler. And I, I, agree. I feel like I could, if Dylan said, Hey, I want to be alone. I could receive that. But if he was like, I need taste from you, I'd be like, oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wife, are so hurt. I'm this wonderful wife. How could yeah. you want space How away from me? Space? What's yeah, wrong with exactly. you, boy? Exactly. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, and I think just being creative about this, I think maybe even it, lo it looks like like Dylan and I have a, have had a couple nights where we just said like, hey, we're going to do our own thing tonight. And so like I went in the bedroom and watched a show on my phone and he watched a show on the in the living room on the TV is just like doing separate things, maybe even just in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And then I think for those of you that are having to work at home together, maybe setting up different workspaces in different rooms, even if you have to kind of get creative with this, because some people live in small apartments, one bedroom apartments Absolutely. or whatever it may be. So maybe it's like, do you have a porch or a balcony that one of you can work on for even just a few hours a day, just to, again, have some alone time as you're, as you're getting your job done. Yeah, I know it's one thing Neil said because they they in New York City when where they were they couldn't go out, everything was being delivered. But they live in an apartment that has a rooftop, and so he was going up on the rooftop some 
you know, just to, to get away. So yeah, be creative. Use what, what, what you've got there. And, uh, um, and if you just, if you need some space, make sure you take it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Instead of lashing out at them. Right. Cause that's, the, yes. that's yes. the other, yeah, yes. so there's other, there's better ways to handle that. So Dr. Graham, what advice do you have for us on how to help our spouse who might be real feeling really anxious? Uh, a probably a couple of, one pray for them and, and praying to gather with them, I think really helps too. of, of just got, asking God to give them some peace. Just the fact that you're joining together in that, I think encouraging them, you know, in, in just each day, you know, what, and, and finding out, you know, what are they anxious about? And you, not that you can fix it, but you're helping them talk about it. Um, and then if you see them doing something, maybe you're seeing them, the one reason they're anxious is because they just spent seven hours watching CNN or Fox or, <clears throat> or something, MSM, whatever they're watching about this stuff. Well, say, hey, let's let's do what's something constructive or let's go do this. Kind of help them get away from that. Uh, we mentioned you version plans earlier. Maybe together you say, let's do a user and plan on anxiety. Let's see what God says about that. And then because then you're taking, you can take some of those scriptures and maybe one of the scriptures in there is really good. And you say, let's just write this down. Let's just put it on the refrigerator. And every time that we feel anxious, let's go read that scripture. And so letting God's truth begin to, to come in and be a part of that. I think a lot of the anxiety comes is when we feel alone and we feel like we don't have answers a lot of it we don't have answers right now but god does and so it's it's letting him walk us through that and encouraging each other in that and making sure reminding each other that hey god is still control in control of this he is he um you know it'd be nice if he just send us all a text message and said what we're, he's doing but but he's still in control and he still loves us and he's not going to leave us or forsake us and we have to remember those things and i to me those are some of the best things for anxiety. And certainly if it gets out of hand and maybe you need to contact your doctor, if you need some medication or help during that time too. Yeah. Which is a, it's totally okay. And, absolutely. Okay. And use all the tools and resources that we can get. And so yep. absolutely do that if you need to. Dr. Kim, some of us, some of our listeners have, have lost jobs or have had spouses mm. who have lost jobs. How can they practically support each other through a job loss? I think uh, kind of reiterating maybe some of the things that we did together. No, nope, nobody caused this to happen. So we don't want to do blame uh, that idea of being a team and then encourage each other. You know, I think looking for ways to encourage each other and be positive about the things that you are doing. I've talked to, to people that said, my, my husband is being the best father I've ever seen. He is doing such a good, okay. You don't have any money coming in, but he's been a good dad. So tell him he's been a good dad and let him encourage that in that. And then I think that if it is the financial things, just let's plan, let's work together. What can we do? What can we cut out? How do we work together? How do we make it through this? Uh, do we apply for stimulus? Do we um, uh, cut some, some bills out? You know, what can we do to do this? Do we need to apply for unemployment? And um, certainly I've got, I was talking to a guy yesterday that's <clears throat> administrator in the hospital and, and they, you know, some hospitals that aren't COVID-19 hospitals, uh, are having to let people go or cut their hours. And so he had come up with a plan where his people work a week on week off. So the, the week that week on, they can get all their hours and then they're, I guess you can apply for a partial, uh, unemployment. And so they will be able to do that and get their free salary. So there's a lot of creative ways out there. And there's a lot of grace being given in so many uh, areas to to help people through this. So so make sure you're taking advantage of what might be available for you too. And looking at all those options together, working together on that. Don't just sit there and say, I can't believe you lost your job. Well, guess what? There's a lot of people who've lost their job through this. And, mm -hmm. that's, and it's hard for everybody. I mean, no matter what that is. And so again, let it work together, encourage each other, love each other through this. Uh, you know, my mom always said, but there, and she'd been through a world war with my dad away that was in the Philippines. She'd been through the depression. She'd been all those things. She always, her thing was said always was this, this too shall pass. And you know what? This will, this will pass too. It, we're going to get through this and come out on the other end. And how the choice is, is how do we go through that yeah. during this time? Yeah. Some people hate that phrase, but I love that phrase. This too, I do too because, because it's, it's, true. it's true and it gives you so much hope because it, it's, 
it's when we get hyper-focused on the now and our current circumstance that it just feels also crippling. But when we realize it's not going to be like this forever, even if it's literally like this until we die, it's still not going to be like this forever because we have an eternal hope in Jesus. Absolutely. And so this, it, this too shall pass. And, you know, I think anyone who, like your mother had gone through, like the, these things do fade away. The Great Depression did fi- fade away. COVID-19, will we will find a new normal after this. I'm confident yeah. in that. I don't know for sure, but I'm confident in it and I'm going to hope for it. And I, I do. Think yeah. Awesome. And, and I think it was something with my mom by the time, you know, she passed away when she was 90. Did she say that when her family went through depression, when she was a young girl, the great depression? I don't know, but I think because she did that and then she married my dad and then he gets shipped off for two or three years that as she saw that and went through life, by the time she was 90, it was like, this is going to pass because yeah. I've been through this, this, and this. And so I think it's easier for some of us to have been through more things, but, but take the wisdom of those who have gone through things to know that it will pass and that God, God's in all of this. He will be, he will have answers for us. Yeah, definitely. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And then I think when it comes to the job loss situation, it just, you know, job loss is a big deal. It's really crushing for a lot of people. Um, especially, I think, especially for a man, I think it really hurts a man's pride um, and a man's self-worth when he loses a job, even if it's yeah. for something like this, where it's not his fault at all that he lost yeah. his job. And so I just really think we need to care really well for our spouse if they, if they have lost a job and really be conscious of that and their, and their, and their mental state and all of that. And especially for wives out there, wives, if your husband has lost their job, care for them really well, love them really well, cover them in prayer, check on them, but don't smother them. So check in on them, ask them how they're doing emotionally, spiritually, mentally, but don't smother them. And, and just really ask them what they need from you say, Hey, I know this must be really hard. What do you need from me? How can I support you through this? And let them answer because everyone's so different. Yeah, you're right. I, I think as men, one, I think that God put that in us to provide for our families. Uh, that's a role that we have. <clears throat> and I think most of us as guys get a lot of our identity from our from our job. If we're using, especially if we're using the gifts God's given us, that we really do get a lot out of that. And so if that's been taken away, and I think speaking to the the guys, and I know women have lost jobs too, but just but for the guys, uh, it's okay. Okay, don't sit around and sulk at home. Okay, you're at home. What can you do there? And you you do have the role of a husband. You do have the role of a father and how do you, maybe that's your new, your job right now. It is your job right now. So, so maybe it's a lot of, it's just a mindset shift for you. Okay. I'm home more. Uh, my job is to be a great husband. How do I do that today? And so again, it's, it's being proactive for each other. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Um, Dr. Kim, some of our listeners have been affected by COVID-19 directly because of sickness or family or friends that are sick. How can we support our spouse when our, they're, we're dealing with someone who we know is sick? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it is. I can't even imagine because uh, I've uh, had one family member that, that went through it, but the symptoms were very minimal and, and it was just more of an inconvenience and it was really something that was tough. I think I think be, just like any time when something like this hap- or something happens where there's sickness or death or those kind of things, uh, be present with the person. I mean, I think that well, I think sometimes we don't realize the value of just being present, of just sitting down beside someone, of putting your arm around that person or holding their hand or saying, I care, or saying, is there anything I can do to help? Uh, just like we do with other grief issues, because we talked earlier, this is a grief issue. And and knowing that you don't have to have all the answers, but, but just because being there uh, is going to mean a lot. I think that just makes a big difference. And again, it allows you to come alongside each other through this time. And maybe you're both in a grief situation because of family members. You know, I've talked to people who, yeah, who maybe uh, they've had people on both sides of their family uh, have it, you know, those kind of things. And and another thing I think is hard right now too, for those who maybe do have someone sick and it may not even be COVID, but they're in the hospital and you can't visit them. And so yeah. maybe your spouse is in that situation. Maybe they have a parent or a sibling or whatever that's in the hospital that they're deeply connected to and love and they can't even visit them right now. And so just being there and letting them talk about that, just the, the whole thing I'm saying is be present with them. Yeah, that is good advice. That is good advice. And cover them in prayer. That's good. Yeah. Well, Dr. Kim, this has been a good conversation. I hope this provides some hope um, for those who are listening and some practical things that we can kind of do um, to journey through this together as a married couple. What final piece of advice do you have for our listeners about this? Yeah, I think so. Look at it as an opportunity to grow. Uh, 
make the goal together to come out stronger individually in, in your marriage, to grow in your relationship with God. Use the resources that are available to you. Christina mentioned two of our great ones, the, the house prayer cards for coronavirus and the date design that we're giving away free on those things. Uh, those are some things that you can do to be creative and have fun and, and looking for ways to interject that. There's a lot of good ideas on the internet right now that people are doing. There's challenges you can get involved in as couples. And so look for some things to, to do to, um, to energize you and, and have fun together and to um, this isn't something many of us wanted, but let's make the best of it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And yeah, don't don't forget to check out those resources, those free date designs and those coronavirus house prayer cards. And also just let us know if you need anything from us. If there, if you have an idea or a, a thing that you're like, man, I wish Awesome Marriage would do this X, Y, and Z for us. Just let us know. Email us at info at awesomemarriage.com and let us know. Yeah. Let us know how we can be praying for you. We have a whole team who loves praying for you. And so if you have specific prayer requests, we would love to pray for you. So never, ever hesitate to reach out to us. You can always email us at info at awesomemarriage.com, or you can d direct message us over on Instagram. We love praying for you and we love hearing from you. You guys have a great day. Journey well through this together as a couple as we uh, face this pandemic and do something awesome for your marriage today. 